you want to frame it very precisely, why have we had 25 or 30 years of one bubble of extraordinary proportions after another, uh, starting with Japan in the late 1980s. Uh, you had um, South Asia in the mid-90s. You had the tech boom in the, the late 90s. And of course, three incredible overlapping bubbles, housing, which peaked in Q2 of 06, finance um, and, and financial leverage that peaked in Q2 of 07, and then um, arguably uh, emerging markets, which I believe is an equally serious bubble that basically came to an end uh, in late uh, 2007 and uh, early 2000, 2008. And uh, one of the questions we should ask is, why have there been so many bubbles? And uh, I think the events of the last uh, two months uh, perhaps um, will, uh, will lessen the appeal of the, of the m conventional answer to this, which for the last 20 years has been that one cannot talk about bubbles, that it's not coherent to talk about them, that, uh, you know, uh, to, to paraphrase Alan Greenspan, uh, the bigger a bubble it is, the harder it is to see. So there may be lots of little bubbles, but we can never see a big bubble, which is, of course, spatially a very odd metaphor, since one would think that the bigger something is, the easier it is to see. Um, and I think, uh, I think the question of these systematic uh, distortions um, is once again going to become a real question in a way that it has not been uh, for a very long time.